All right, time to wrap it all together here. Why did I have you guys complete the square on Friday? This is why. All right, let's start off with a basic example of a circle. Say you're given the center and the radius. You could turn that into an equation. You would put the negative 2, the x-coordinate of the center with the x parenthesis, and remember to change the sign so it's x plus 2, the y-coordinate of the center and the y parenthesis, change the sign and square the radius. So that's the equation of the circle. That's what we spent a lot of time on last week. That's actually called the standard form of the circle. And now I'm going to show you another form of the equation of the circle called the expanded form. So the expanded form is actually taking this x plus 2 and squaring it and taking this y minus 3 and squaring it. So that's review from algebra. So let me just show you how to expand x plus 2 squared. When you square something, you multiply it by itself. So 3 squared is 3 times 3. Well, it's the same thing with the parenthesis. If you square a parenthesis, you got to multiply that parenthesis twice. So x plus 2 times x plus 2. And then you have to distribute the 2 through, and you have to distribute the x through. So x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. And then you distribute the 2 through. 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 2 is 4. You combine your like terms, which are your 2x's and you get x squared plus 4x plus 4, which brings me back to here. So I expanded the x plus 2 squared and got x squared plus 4x plus 4. You expand the y minus 3 the same way, and this is what you get. Note that it's plus 9, not minus 9. So the negative 3 or it doesn't have to be a 3. Any negative number in your parentheses, when you square it, a negative times a negative is a positive. So this constant is always going to be positive. A positive 9, a positive 4, regardless of whether those numbers are positive or negative. A negative does matter for your b value, negative 6. Remember, this is a quadratic, so it's ax squared plus bx plus c. All right, so that's what y minus 3 squared expanded looks like. Now, once you have it expanded, now you can combine your like terms, and the only like terms are the constants, the 4 and the 9. So that's where I get the 13 from on the next line. Everything else is the same. Just combine the 4 and the 9. And now you can set this all equal to 0 if you'd like. So you'd subtract 16 to the left, and you would get negative 3, and that's the expanded form in its simplified version, meaning that all the like terms are combined. Now there's another way that's slightly different, expanded form, expanded form simplified. Instead of subtracting the 16 over to the left and making it a negative 3, you could have subtracted the 13 to the right and made it a positive 3. So maybe you can see both these at the same time. So two different ways to do the expanded form simplified. You can move the constants to the left or to the right. So you could have negative 3 on the left or you could have positive 3 on the right. And as you'll see moving forward here, it's actually a little better to do it this way, to move the constants all to the right because ultimately we want the constants on the right all by themselves because the constants are the radius squared. So even though I have it on the left, the first thing I do in my next line here is move it to the right. So what am I doing here? I drew a line here on purpose because now we've, we're have we going to kind of work backwards. This is this right here where we ended in expanded form simplified is what you're going to see as a problem. You're just going to be given this information right here and you're going to have to work backwards to get to the standard form. So this is where you're going to have to complete the square to work backwards. So to complete the square, if you learned from Friday, com the formula for completing the square is to take half of your b term and square it. So that's what I did here. I took half of 4. 4 divided by 2. That's half of 4, and I square it. Same thing with your y. Now this is, this is basically completing the square twice in one problem. You have to complete the square for your x's, and you have to complete the square for your y's, and they're separate. So do them separate. So you complete the square for the x's. You take half of 4 and you square it. For the y's, you take half of negative 6, negative 6 divided by 2, and you square it. So before I squared it, I simplified my fraction. 4 over 2 is 2. Negative 6 over 2 is negative 3. So those are half of your b terms. 2 is half of 4. 
negative 3 is half of 6, and then you square those numbers. 2 squared is 4, negative 3 squared is 9. So we're almost there. <clears throat> but what we did was we added something to this expanded form simplified. We basically added a 4 and a 9 to the left-hand side of the equation. Well, whenever you add something to an equation, you have to add the same thing on both sides so that it stays balanced. So that's where this 4 and 9 comes from. If we add a 4 and a 9 on the left-hand side, we have to add a 4 and a 9 on the right-hand side to keep it balanced. Now, we can factor x squared plus 4x plus 4. What number multiplies to get 4 and adds to get 4? It's 2. Same with our y's. What number multiplies to give 9 and adds to give negative 6? Negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Negative 3 plus negative 3 is negative 6. So we're basically factoring our expanded form here into x plus 2 squared and y minus 3 squared, and we add the numbers on the right-hand side to get 16, and that's our standard form. That's back to where we started. So that's what the homework's going to be like. You're going to be given problems in the expanded form simplified, and you're going to have to do what's below the line here to turn them into the standard form of a circle. Now, I'll start off the video tomorrow with another example of this, probably one of the problems from the homework. And so you'll get to see this again if you're struggling with it still by tomorrow. Hopefully it'll start making more sense for you. But I think um, this is pretty good here. I think if you rewatch some parts of this video, if you're having trouble with it, hopefully it'll make sense for you.